Hold on to your seats, parents, because what's inside this video is time sensitive and oh so crucial. I've got a message that's so urgent, it's about your daughter. This Monday is looming on the horizon, and what's set to unfold is nothing short of life altering. The countdown has begun for her, and you absolutely need to open this immediately. There's a piece of the puzzle that's about to fall into place, and it's a story you won't want to miss. Brace yourselves because the stakes are high, and there's a sense of urgency here, especially if there are pre-existing medicals, conditions, or signs of stress. This isn't just a video. It's a call that demands your immediate attention. The secrets unveiled here hold the power to elevate your life and your loved one. Do not deny yourself this chance. The choice is clear watch now and seize the opportunity before the profound truths slip through your fingers. Your destiny is calling and the time to answer is now. But before that, you've committed a grave mistake marked by the disapproval of the Lord. Pay close attention to this warning and divine suggestion before plunging into crucial matters. Have you ever detected the subtle tremors beneath the surface of your daughter's world, sensing that there's more to her story than meets the eye? Brace yourself, for what I'm about to share is a crucial narrative that goes beyond the ordinary. There's an unseen script being written. In the chapters of your daughter's life, and every glance, every gesture holds a clue to a story you may not yet fully grasp. Join me on this journey of parental intuition as we delve into the delicate nuances that could reshape the narrative of your daughter's journey, the untold secrets, the unspoken struggles. Keep a vigilant eye on your daughter, for within his world, mysteries beckon. Don't blink as the tale is about to unfold. Before immersing yourself in the profound discourse, let the sacred whispers of the divine envelop your senses for the Father has a celestial message to bestow upon your awaiting soul. My beloved child, I come to you with words of encouragement and hope, for I want you to know that I am not done with you. You may feel burdened by mistakes, distant from my grace, or even at a point where you think all is lost. But hear this, my child, you are never too far from my reach, and there is no place where I have written you off. In the midst of your failures, weaknesses, and struggles. That is where the true weight of my grace, mercy, and love becomes evident. I see beyond your present circumstances, and I assure you that the story is far from over. Yes, a chapter may have ended perhaps a divorce, a struggle, a failure, but that is not the end of your life. I have a greater purpose for you, and I am actively working on you at this very moment. Your failures do not define you, they are opportunities for my grace to shine. Do not be disheartened, for I will not put more on you than you can bear. Failure only occurs when you refuse to rise again. You cannot wallow in shame or carry the weight of guilt forever. Get up, my child, for every human stumbles, falls and faces struggles. It may seem like the clock has run out, but with me, there is always another play, another chance for redemption. Rejoice! For I am the potter, molding your life. Do not be intimidated by what you lack, for I have given you everything you need to fulfill your purpose. Today, find joy in the fact that I, e, the potter, am shaping your destiny. Others may have tried to leave their marks on your life, but I am about to erase those fingerprints. I am putting my hands on your life, ensuring that not an ounce of your potential is wasted. Listen to me, my beloved for I am the one who knows what you can become. Do not let the words of others define you. I see your potential before it even begins to manifest. Reclaim your narrative from the hands of those who seek to manipulate it. I, the author and finisher of your faith, am in control. Trust in my faithfulness and let hope arise in your heart. Pray, my child, for things change when you communicate with me. Open your Bible, for it brings. Find comfort and direction in both the Holy Spirit's guidance and your ongoing character development. Your story is far from over, so shift your focus from the crisis to me, for I have the power to change everything. Remember, my child, I am not done with you yet. Your journey is ongoing, and there is a moment of revelation awaiting you. Stay on this wheel and let the potter's hands work on your story. The enemy may want to rewrite it, 
but I am the true author, crafting a beautiful narrative for you. Your story is still being written, and with me, it will be a tale of triumph, redemption, and unending love. Now comes the message the Father is talking about. After that, a prayer and some divine wisdom to protect yourself from any unforeseen event. Welcome, dear souls, to this sacred space of love and compassion. Today, we gather with grateful hearts, as the Divine has chosen this moment to share messages that illuminate the path of your beloved. Together, let us immerse ourselves in the depth of these sacred words, guided by the tender embrace of Divine Grace. God affirms that only His loyal followers will watch this video until the end. Today, God has something important to tell you, my dear child, straight from the depths of His heart. So listen closely. Your daughter, yes, your very own flesh and blood, is about to embark on something truly incredible, seriously mind-blowing. No one has ever done anything like it before. Can you believe it? If you believe, please like this video and subscribe. God reveals that your daughter is on a path meant just for her, a special journey crafted by the Divine herself. However, she will need your support both emotionally and spiritually. It's going to be a big deal, and she will need you by her side, cheering her on. You know what, your daughter is destined for greatness. Yes, you heard it right. She has an amazing future ahead of her, filled with extraordinary things. It's like her God-given secret superpower that sets her apart from everyone else. Trust me, it's going to be mind-boggling. If you trust, type Amen. God assures you, my dear child, to get ready for the ride of a lifetime. Keep an eye on your daughter. Be there for her with all your heart. Shower her with love and encouragement. Believe in her like no one else does. If you believe in your daughter, like this video and type triple one, God emphasizes that you have a crucial role to play in helping her and achieve her dreams. And here's the best part. All of this is part of a grand plan. It's like God is pulling the strings behind them. Scenes guiding your daughters every step. It's a pretty big deal that God trusts you with this task. If you are ready, like this video and type, yes. Prepare yourself for this opportunity as it is a chance bestowed upon you by a divine force. Embrace it with all your heart and be ready for the extraordinary journey that lies ahead. In the end, my dear child, be prepared for something truly extraordinary beyond the realms of this world. Your daughter's journey will undoubtedly leave an indelible mark on your life. It serves as a testament to his distinct purpose and the immense love and support that surround him. Therefore, embrace your role and get ready to witness the enchanting magic he will bring to this world. If this resonates with you, show your appreciation by liking this video and typing Amen. Today, I want to shower you with positive affirmations that deeply resonate within your heart. Repeat them with unwavering conviction after me. Your daughter is destined for greatness. Her potential knows no limits, and she is surrounded by boundless love and support. Her passion will ignite the world, and her inner strength and resilience will guide her through any challenges she may face. The future holds endless possibilities for her. Allow me to share a heartwarming story of a mother's love and the journey towards greatness. Once upon a time in the enchanting town of Serendipity, there lived a courageous and nurturing mother named Amelia and her extraordinary daughter, Eli. Their story is filled with a myriad of emotions, suspense, and heartwarming moments that will undoubtedly touch your heart. From the very beginning, Amelia knew deep within her soul that Eli was destined for something special. Her eyes sparkled with curiosity, and her laughter carried a magical melody that enchanted all those around her. Little did they know, Eli possessed. Prepare yourself for this opportunity, as it is a chance bestowed upon you by a divine force. Embrace it with all your heart, and be ready for the extraordinary journey that lies ahead. In the end, my dear child, be prepared for something truly extraordinary beyond the realms of this world. Your daughter's journey will undoubtedly leave an indelible mark on your life. It serves as a testament to his distinct purpose 
and the immense love and support that surround her. Therefore, embrace your role and get ready to witness the enchanting magic she will bring to this world. With unwavering conviction, repeat after me, your daughter is destined for greatness. Her potential knows no limits, and she is surrounded by boundless love and support. Her passion will ignite the world, and her inner strength and resilience will guide her through any challenges she may face. The future holds endless possibilities for her. The power of love, unity, and the pursuit of greatness transform the serendipity floor. If you seek to walk in the supernatural with God, there will always be a moment in which you must make the same choice. If you will make it, you may proceed with God and have abundance and blessing too. If you will not make this choice, you will go backward, back to the old ways, the old land, the old misery. Staying still is not an option. So what's the choice before you? Only this, what will you give up for Christ's sake? Ruth was willing to give up everything her family, culture, traditions, and home, all for the sake of following the way of God. So, what are you willing to give up? Will you give up your right to worry about your circumstances and decide to trust God and speak in faith no matter what? Will you give up your right to be right in order to humble yourself under God's mighty hand? Will you give up your right to do what you want with your time in order to seek God with your time? Will you give up your entitlement to good treatment in order to complete the sufferings of Christ in your own life? Mark 8, 34, 37 says, When he had called the people to himself, with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? There is a choice that you and I must make, and we must make it daily. That choice determines whether we will be disciples of Christ or merely fans of Christ. What will you choose today? Ponder your answer, meditate on it. Don't take this decision lightly. Then, talk to the Lord about it and verbalize your choice to Him. And now, let's pray, Father God. In Jesus' name, I choose this day to make Jesus the absolute, 100% boss of my life. I choose to bow and yield my all to you. I choose to obey you in everything. Please help me carry out this choice every moment of my life, from this time forward and forevermore. Convict me and help me as I walk with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. My child, if I should ask you, are you walking in faith? Are you walking by sight? How would you answer that? Do you walk according my will, purpose and plan, or are you just walking, trusting and hoping things will turn out? I want you to walk, trusting me for every single thing, and that is, walk by faith. You either walk by faith or by sight. Sometime you've got to see it to believe it, and you have such moments in your life. Your decisions really matter. When you want to hear my voice, or receive some definite sign from me regarding a relationship, perhaps a pending marriage, a business decision, a career choice, or a major expenditure, you know your decisions really matter. You make decisions, your decisions turn around and make you, and you face so many questions throughout all of your lifetime. Like, how about should I get married? If the answer is yes, who should I marry? Should I go to college? I've got a good job. Shall I take the new job? Should I just hold on to the one I have? Is there any way to be 100% certain about my will when you're making a major choice in life or a college? But remember, you walk by faith, not by sight. You walk by faith. And I want to say to you, you are not going to get 100% assurance and confidence before you make a choice because it would require zero faith. You pray about it, you wait on me, and then you make our choice. You believe what you don't see. That's what faith is. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Once you see, then you don't need faith anymore. Faith means you have it in your heart, 
before you have it in your circumstance. But it really can be just as good as having it if you really trust and believe me. You have to take the plunge. You have to make the choice. Go ahead and make the best decision you can make. And when you've done that, leave the results to me because my purpose will stand. And if yours are not, I will correct it. I will redeem it and I will still keep you on the right path to your future destiny and will not forsake you. I want you to know my will more than you want to know it. One of the reasons that people live out of the divine will is they're not willing to take the first step. I hear people tell this all the time. Well, God doesn't speak to me. Yes, I does. You may not be listening, but I do. I don't play favorites. I love you all, but sometimes I'll require of you something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you're going to follow the Lord, you've got to be willing to listen to me and you've got to be willing to trust me when you don't understand it. You may have some things you don't understand, you can't figure out, you don't see the answer. That's okay, you don't have to see it. This is a key to faith, trusting when you don't understand, trusting when you don't have the answers, trusting when it seems like just the opposite of what you were hoping for. Quit worrying about those things you can't figure out. I view you in the palm of my hand. You may not know how this is going to work out, but you do know who's on the throne. You do know who's directing your steps. You do know who's planned out your days. Before you were ever born, I've pondered plans I had for you before. There was even a single day to your existence, and I established your purpose before you were ever created in your mother's womb. They were actually recorded or written in my book. I have plans for you. I have some plans, plural ones. I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and to give you a hope. So, I have great plans for you. I promise that my plans for your destiny are only good ones. No disasters are planned for you. I haven't written down on this occasion when they're 35, 40 years old. I'm going to get them. None of that. You are not God. That, no. My plans are only good and they're only filled with grace and hope. You're not God. I am. It is really comforting to know. You know there is a God and it isn't me. And that's why you must hanging on to me and trust me. What happens is that you forget that I am in control of the life I gave you. You do want to make good choices, but you're a limited human being. You can't see the future, but I can. You've got scripture, you've got prayer, you've got wise people, and then you've got a peace in your heart. And at the end of the day, you have to trust me and you have to believe regardless of what happens. You don't have to obsess, hyperventilate, or control everyone and everything around you. You don't have to worry about the minutiae, the little miniature things of life. You can have confidence that your father is going to take care of everything. You know you can sleep well once you realize I'm in control of your life. You must know no human being energized by Satan, not even Satan himself, can stop my purpose for your life or mine. Even if you trust me and make a mistake, if you genuinely make a mistake, I have the most awesome ways of correcting that mistake. I know your heart. I know you're willing to do or what I requires of you. But the question is, are you listening? And secondly, are you trusting that whatever I say for you to do, that you're to do? Remember Abraham, he made some wrong choices, but I didn't stop blessing him. I didn't cast him aside. I knew that my finest children would make mistakes. They would sin against me. They would disobey me because living in the world in which you live in, that you make mistakes, the times of weakness, the times of failure, and I forgive and I keep moving you. I can put you exactly where I want you to be. I can arrange all the details of your life years in advance. I can open doors that seem shut tight. I can remove any obstacle that stands in your way. I can take your choices and fit them into my plan so you end up at the right place at the right time. 
I can even take your mistakes and bring good out of them. Don't forget, I'm your Redeemer. I redeems things. I can take tragedy, use it for your good and my glory. All I need is a willing heart, just someone to reasonably cooperate. This doesn't mean you won't have to make difficult and hard choices. You will, but it takes the pressure off because it means you can trust me to take your decisions, your choices, and use them to accomplish my will in your life. Here comes the message Father is talking about, and after that, a prayer and some divine wisdom to save yourself from any unforeseen event. Imagine a journey through a mystical garden where each flower represents a divine blessing waiting to bloom in your life. These blessings, when nurtured and cared for, have the power to transform your life in the most profound ways. Today, let us walk hand in hand through this garden, discovering how to activate these seven blessings that God has gracefully bestowed upon us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, just like a gardener tending to his garden, we must nurture these blessings with love, patience, and perseverance. The Bible, our guide in this journey, provides the wisdom and direction we need to activate these blessings in our lives. As we prepare to explore the richness of God's blessings, remember that each blessing is like a precious seed that requires nurturing. In Galatians 6 verse 9, we are encouraged, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. This verse inspires us to persevere in our efforts, assuring us that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. The process of nurturing these blessings may require time and effort, but the harvest is undoubtedly abundant and fulfilling, with hearts full of hope and faith. Let us look at seven blessings that can be activated in order to receive God's promises in our lives. Number one, the blessing of wisdom. Wisdom, my friends, is like a guiding star in the night sky, leading us through the darkness of uncertainty. As Proverbs 4, verse 7 tells us, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. In our pursuit of wisdom, we must remember that it is more than just knowledge or information. It is a divine gift that shapes our understanding and guides our decisions. Wisdom enlightens our path and equips us to face life's complexities with discernment and grace. It is the compass by which we navigate the challenging waters of life, ensuring we stay true to our course. This pursuit of wisdom is a journey of continuous growth and learning, one that deepens our relationship with God and enhances our ability to live in harmony with His will. As we seek this invaluable treasure, let us do so with hearts open to the teachings of the Lord, ready to apply His wisdom in every aspect of our lives. To activate this blessing in our lives, we must embrace a life of constant learning and humble seeking. It begins with acknowledging that true wisdom comes from God and is more precious than any earthly possession. We activate wisdom by immersing ourselves in God's Word, letting its truths permeate our thoughts and actions. As we read, study, and meditate on the scriptures, we find our minds being transformed, our perspectives broadened, and our understanding deepened. Prayer is the key that unlocks the door to wisdom. When we come before God in sincere prayer, seeking His guidance and understanding, He generously imparts His wisdom to us. It's a conversation with the Creator, where we lay down our own understanding and open our hearts to receive His divine insight. Remember, wisdom is not just about knowing what to do. It's about having the courage to do what is right. Therefore, we must also be doers of the Word, applying God's wisdom in our daily lives making decisions that align with His will and purpose. Wisdom also involves learning from our experiences and the world around us. God often uses our daily interactions, challenges, and even our failures as teaching tools. My friends, it's important to stay humble, acknowledging that we don't have all the answers and be willing to learn from others. Wisdom is not a destination, but a journey of growth and understanding. 
As we walk in wisdom, we become a light to others, guiding them through our words and actions. Proverbs 1 verse 5 says, A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. The story of Joseph in Egypt illustrates the power of wisdom in action. Despite being sold into slavery and unjustly imprisoned, Joseph's wisdom and ability to interpret dreams elevated him to a position of influence. His wise management during times of plenty and famine not only saved Egypt, but also his own family. Joseph's life is a testament to the transformative power of divine wisdom, even in the most challenging circumstances. Number two, the blessing of faith. My friends, faith is the bridge between our earthly existence and the divine promises of God. As Hebrews 11 verse 1 describes, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, in its essence, is a profound trust in the Almighty, a trust that transcends our understanding and sight. It is the unwavering conviction in our hearts that God's promises will come to pass, despite what our current circumstances may suggest. This kind of faith is not passive. It's dynamic and active, propelling us forward in our journey with God. It encourages us to step out into the unknown, holding firmly to the belief that God is with us and for us. Faith molds our character, shapes our destiny, and brings the unseen into reality. As we embrace this powerful force, let us do so with the knowledge that our faith pleases God and is the key to unlocking the fullness of His promises in our lives. To activate the blessing of faith, we must first choose to trust God, even when circumstances challenge our beliefs. It's about believing in His promises and holding on to them even when they seem distant or impossible. Faith grows in the soil of our daily lives. It is nurtured through our experiences, especially during times of trial and uncertainty. Just like a muscle, faith strengthens as we use it. We activate our faith by stepping out in trust, making decisions based on God's promises rather than our fears or doubts. It's about taking those leaps of faith, whether big or small, and trusting that God is in control. Regularly feeding our faith through prayer and the Word of God is crucial. When we immerse ourselves in Scripture, we are reminded of God's faithfulness and power. These truths become the foundation upon which we build our faith. It's also important to surround ourselves with a community of believers who can encourage and support us in our faith journey, much like our daily Jesus devotional community. Faith is also about seeing beyond the present. It's having a vision of what God can do and holding on to that vision, even when it's not yet a reality. Faith calls us to be dreamers and visionaries, seeing potential where others see impossibility. It's about believing for healings, breakthroughs, and miracles, even when they seem out of reach. And why do we do this? We embrace this path, not because we've lost touch with reality, but because we are profoundly anchored in a truth that transcends ordinary understanding. It's not a sign of madness, but a demonstration of our unwavering faith in a powerful and loving God. We do this because we firmly believe that with God, nothing is impossible. This conviction isn't just a hopeful thought. It's a living, breathing reality in our lives. In moments of doubt or uncertainty, this belief serves as our guiding light reminding us of the limitless possibilities that lie in God's hands. It's a source of strength and courage, empowering us to face challenges with confidence and grace, fully aware that with God's presence, even the most daunting obstacles can be overcome. Let us consider the story of Gideon, who, despite his initial doubts and fears, led Israel to victory over the Midianites with a significantly smaller army. Gideon's journey from uncertainty to faith demonstrates that God often uses our weaknesses to showcase His strength. His story inspires us to trust in God's plans and power, even when we feel inadequate or overwhelmed. Number three, the blessing of peace. Peace, my friends, is like a gentle river that flows through the landscape of our lives, bringing tranquility and harmony in its wake. As Philippians 4 verse 7 reminds us, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This peace, bestowed by God, is not merely the absence of conflict or turmoil. 
It is a profound sense of well-being and contentment that fills our hearts, even amidst life's storms. It is a peace that calms our fears, soothes our anxieties, and brings stillness to our restless spirits. This divine tranquility transcends human logic, prevailing even when circumstances seem chaotic and unpredictable. It's a sacred gift that guards our hearts and minds, anchoring us in the midst of life's uncertainties. As we seek to embrace and embody this peace, we become beacons of serenity and hope, not only for ourselves, but for those around us, radiating the assurance that, in God, we find a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. So, how do we access this kind of peace? To activate this blessing of peace, the first step is to cultivate a heart of trust in God. Trusting in His sovereignty and goodness, even amidst chaos, is what allows His peace to guard our hearts and minds. To immerse in this peace, we must also learn the art of letting go and surrendering our worries to God. It involves casting all our anxieties upon Him, as 1 Peter 5 verse 7 advises, because He cares for us. This act of surrender is not a sign of weakness. Rather, it is an acknowledgement of God's infinite power and love for us. In the quietness of prayer and meditation, we find ourselves enveloped by His peace, a sanctuary from the storms of life. Peace is also cultivated through harmonious relationships. It calls us to be peacemakers, to resolve conflicts with grace, and to extend forgiveness. Just as Jesus taught about turning the other cheek, our pursuit of peace often means choosing love and understanding over retaliation or anger. The story of Abraham and Lot separating their flocks in order to avoid conflict in Genesis 13 is a powerful example of seeking peace. Abraham's decision to let Lot choose his land first demonstrates the strength and confidence that comes from trusting in God's provision. It shows us that sometimes peace requires us to take a step back to make sacrifices and let God lead the way. Number four, the blessing of favor. My dear friends, favor is like a gentle breeze that subtly shifts the course of our life towards divine opportunities and blessings. As Psalm 5 verse 12 reminds us, the Lord blesses the righteous and surrounds them with favor as with a shield. This favor from the Lord is not just a fleeting moment of good fortune. It is a consistent and powerful force that shapes our journey, opening doors and creating pathways where there seem to be none. It is God's way of marking our lives with His signature, a tangible sign of His presence and approval, guiding us towards His best plans and purposes for us. To activate the blessing of favor in our lives, we must align ourselves with God's will and principles. This alignment begins with a heart that seeks to please God in all things, living a life that reflects His love and righteousness. So activating favor often involves obedience to God's Word. When we follow His commands and live according to His teachings, we position ourselves under the canopy of His favor. It's about making choices that honor God, even when they are against the norm or challenging. Obedience in small things often leads to greater demonstrations of God's favor in our lives. Prayer is a powerful tool in cultivating favor. By maintaining a vibrant prayer life, we stay connected to God, attuned to His voice, and sensitive to His leading. In these moments of communion with God, we gain insight into His will for our lives and find the strength to walk in it. My friends, prayers of faith, humility, and expectation open the doors to God's favor. Favor also flourishes in an atmosphere of faith and expectancy. When we live with the expectation that God is working in our favor, our perspective changes. We begin to see challenges as opportunities for God to demonstrate His power and goodness in our lives. This attitude of expectancy attracts divine favor, transforming ordinary situations into testimonies of God's grace. Consider the story of Esther, who found favor in the eyes of the king and was able to save her people from destruction. Her story is a testament to the extraordinary impact of God's favor. Esther's courage, combined with divine favor, brought about deliverance and victory for an entire nation. Her life exemplifies how favor can elevate us to positions where we can make a significant difference in the world around us. Number five, the blessing of financial prosperity. 
Financial prosperity is like a river that flows, bringing sustenance and opportunity to our lives. As 3 John verse 2 reminds us, God desires for us to prosper in all things and be in health, just as our soul prospers. This prosperity, blessed by God, is not just about material wealth, but encompasses a holistic well-being that aligns our financial resources with His divine purpose and abundance. To activate this blessing, we must first align our mindset with God's principles of stewardship and generosity. It begins with acknowledging that everything we have is a gift from God and should be managed wisely and generously. Speaking declarations of faith over our finances is a powerful way to activate this blessing. Regularly declare that God is your provider and that He is opening doors of opportunity and blessing in your financial life. These declarations are not just words. They are expressions of faith that align our hearts with God's promises. Practicing faithful stewardship is another key to unlocking financial blessings. This means being wise with our spending, saving, and giving. It involves creating a budget that honors God with our tithes and offerings, and it also allows for saving and investing wisely. When we manage our resources with wisdom and integrity, we position ourselves for increased financial blessings. Generosity is a seed for financial prosperity as we give to others, whether to ministries, charities, or those in need. We sow seeds that will reap a harvest of blessing. The principle of sowing and reaping, as described in 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 8, assures us that those who sow generously will also reap generously. The story of the widow's offering in Mark 12, verses 41 to 44, teaches us about the heart of giving. Despite her financial poverty, her willingness to give all she had caught the attention of Jesus. This story exemplifies that it's not just about the amount we give, but it is also about the heart behind our giving that activates God's blessings. And as we talk about financial blessings, I also want to take a quick moment to extend my sincere gratitude to everyone who has contributed to our ministry in any way. Your support is deeply valued and appreciated. And remember, you are blessed to be a blessing. Number six, the blessing of good health and healing. Good health and healing are like a shield that protects our bodies, enabling us to live our lives to the fullest. As Isaiah 53 verse five tells us, by His stripes, we are healed. To activate this blessing, we must begin by speaking life and health over our bodies. Declare that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed and that your body is functioning in the way God designed it to. These declarations of faith are powerful and can shift realities in the spiritual realm, manifesting in physical healing and health. Adopting a lifestyle that honors our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit is crucial in activating this blessing. This may include maintaining a balanced diet, engaging in exercise, and getting adequate rest. Taking care of our bodies is a form of worship and gratitude to God for the gift of health. Prayer and laying of hands are biblical ways to seek healing. James 5 verses 14 to 15 encourages us to call on the elders of the church for prayer and anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. There is power in communal prayer and faith in God's ability to heal and restore. Maintaining a positive and faith-filled attitude is essential for good health. Proverbs 17 verse 22 tells us that a cheerful heart is good medicine. Therefore, our emotional and mental state can significantly impact our physical well-being. Cultivating joy, peace, and a positive outlook contributes to our overall health. The story of the woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5 verses 25 to 34 is a powerful testimony to the healing power of faith. Her belief that just touching the garment of Jesus would heal her is a testament to the kind of faith we are called to have. Her story inspires us to reach out in faith for our healing, believing in God's power to restore our health. And number seven, the blessing of strong and loving relationships. My friends, Strong, loving relationships are the cornerstone that supports the structure of our lives, binding us together in a network of mutual support and affection. As Romans 12 verse 10 urges us, be devoted to one another in love, 
honor one another above yourselves. To activate this blessing, start by speaking declarations of love, unity, and harmony over your relationships. Declare that your relationships are grounded in love, respect, and understanding. Speak blessings over your family, friends, and pray for those with whom you may have difficult relationships. Practicing forgiveness and grace is vital in nurturing strong relationships. Let go of past hurts and choose to forgive, just as God in Christ forgave us. Forgiveness opens the door to healing and restoration in relationships. Communication is the lifeblood of any relationship. Engage in open, honest, and loving conversations. Make time to listen and to share your heart with those you love. Healthy communication builds trust and understanding, strengthening the bonds of love. Investing time and effort into your relationships is crucial. Just like a garden needs watering and care, so do our relationships. Spend quality time with loved ones. Be present in the moment and show appreciation and affection. The story of Ruth and Naomi is a beautiful example of a strong, loving relationship. Ruth's loyalty and commitment to Naomi, as seen in Ruth 1 verse 16, show the depth of love and sacrifice. This characterizes strong relationships. Their story teaches us the importance of loyalty, love, and the power of relationships to change lives and destinies. My friends, as we journey through the garden of God's magnificent blessings, let's reflect on the profound truths we've discovered about activating these seven blessings. These blessings are expressions of the abundant life that God desires for us. Remember, they are not distant promises, but realities that we can experience by aligning with His Word, declaring our faith, and acting in obedience. Central to these blessings is the love of our Heavenly Father, the foundation of all good things. I urge you to embrace these teachings, apply them in your lives, and be doers of the Word. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the giver of life and every good gift. Your majesty is unmatched, you're all-powerful, and your love is unconditional. I exalt your holy name, for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and adoration. Lord, I thank you for your countless blessings and enduring love. Thank you for your faithfulness, for being my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. In the abundance of your grace, you have provided for my every need and filled my life with your peace and joy. I ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. Forgive me for my sins, both known and unknown. And I also forgive those who have trespassed against me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I claim the blessings of wisdom, faith, peace, favor, financial prosperity, good health, healing, and good relationships. I rebuke any attacks of the enemy against my life, my health, my finances, and my loved ones. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear, anxiety, and discord, and claim the spirit of love, joy, and peace over my life. Lord, bless me with divine health and healing. Heal every part of my body and make me whole. I pray against any form of sickness, disease, or infirmity, declaring that by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Protect me from the attacks of the enemy. Shield me from harm and keep me under the shadow of your wings. Lord, I ask for these same blessings upon my loved ones. May you continue to bless and keep them. Father, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other. Bless us, O Lord, as we forget not all your benefits. May your favor shine upon us and our loved ones. 
guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and let your Holy Spirit guide us in all truth. We claim victory over every challenge and obstacle in our lives. We declare healing over every sickness and we thank you for your protection and guidance. Lord, may your Holy Spirit fill us afresh and empower us to be witnesses of your love and grace. Help us to walk in your ways and to be a light to those around us. Let your kingdom come on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you. In the name of Jesus, you can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening, and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Curious to discover more life-changing insights like these? Then dive right into our next video. It's a journey you won't want to miss. Click on the video and let's keep the universal's wisdom flowing. Curious to discover more life-changing insights like these? Then dive right into our next video. It's a journey you won't want to miss. Click on the video and let's keep the universal's wisdom flowing.